Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can start restricting certain endpoints from the user using roles. In the previous video that you can find right now in the top right corner of your screen, we talked about claims and how we can use claims and policies to actually restrict certain endpoints from the user. In this video I'm going to show you how we can use roles to do that and why you might want to use roles. Uh, first things first, I want to clear out something. Why would you use roles instead of claims? And really what is a role and what is a claim where a claim that we saw in the previous video is something that's saying i claim that i can do this so i claim that i have the right to do this this implies permission however role is just a bunch of permissions grouped together uh, we can see that in the database because a role can actually have claims however a role doesn't need to have claims a role is just a business level representation of our user this can be the super admin, the admin, uh, somebody with moderation rights or anything really. So instead of saying, oh, I can see those tags, I can delete those tags, I can do this, I can do that. We just say this guy is a moderator and then you give all of that out of the box because he is a moderator. Looking at this code from the previous video, I can tell that we actually do not need that from what I want to show you this week. So I'm going to just remove this. However, in order to use roles, we will need something called the role manager. And uh, we're going to need that to create the role and add claims to it if we need to, and also to assign the role to a user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the DB installer and I'm going to see the identity registration code. And I'm going to go here and say add roles and I'm going to add the identity role class here. And this will automatically add the role manager in the DI for the identity role. Of course, just like the identity user, this can be also extended. We will not do that now. We will use the out of the box identity. If in the future video we need to customize that, we will do it, but that's not part of this video. So just by adding this, now I have access to the role manager. And what I want to go ahead and do straight away is go in my program.cs here where I run my migrations. And I want to add some migrations as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var role manager, because now we actually have access to this. And I'm going to go to the service provider and say get required service. And I'm going to get the role manager identity role. And I'm going to say if await role manager dot role exists I think and I'm going to say the role name is admin then please create an admin role I'm going to say new identity role and the only thing I need to specify is the name so I can just say admin here and that should be enough and then just call the role manager dot create async admin role and this will create the admin on the database and the other thing i want to add is the we can name this poster or normal user uh, but this is just another role let's say poster role and this is what role a normal registered member uh, should have those are just examples so i can show you the different combinations so that you can have in roles uh, when it comes to endpoints so that's why i'm creating them here this code could be extracted somewhere else. For now, we're just gonna leave it here because it's not really convoluted. But if it was, or if it gets, we will actually extract this and make this cleaner. But any migrations should run here, not in the startup.cs. Before we go ahead and test this, we need to go to the tags controller and remove this old tag your authorized policy thing. We're not gonna use this anymore. We're just gonna use roles. But for now, what I did is I went to the database and I created three users, a poster, a test, and admin and those users have uh, the roles assigned to them, not all of them, just the poster has the poster role and the admin has the admin role. And you can see in this user roles table that this assignment has taken place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the application and I'm going to show you how the JWTs look. So let me just go ahead and log in with the admin. And if I copy this token now and paste it here, as you can see, I have the role admin assigned. And that is enough for uh, .NET Core to actually identify this user admin as an admin. 
the way to do this, however, is uh, actually very, very simple. I'm going to go ahead and stop the application. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this tags controller, and, you know, on top of the authentication scheme, it actually requires some roles. And the roles it requires is the poster role. If I do say that, let's run the application and see what happens. I'm getting this token that I generated for the admin. And I am going to use this to get all the tags in the system. As you can see, I cannot. I am unauthorized. And that's because the admin is not allowed to view that. The only role that's allowed to view that is the poster. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log in as the poster. Same password. And now, because I will have that role in my token, once I switch that for the poster one, I am able to get those. And in fact, let's just create a few so we can make this more visible. Tag one. And then tag two. And that's because the poster has access to create, view, and delete. So getting those, as you can see, we can save them. Now, what do we save when we want both the poster and the admin to actually view that? Well, we accept commas here. So we can say admin, comma, poster. And this accepts the admin role and the poster role. Let's run this and see how this works. So I'm already logged in as the poster. So if I run this again, I can still see this. And if I log in as the admin and get a token, and use that to log in. We can also say this as the admin. However, both the poster and the admin are allowed to delete tags. So if I go here as an admin, I can just say delete and this is deleted. Going back on this, I can see that this is now deleted. Let me just recreate it, tag three. This is, however, something I don't want my posters to do because upon deleting the tag, every blog post that has this tag will also be affected and I want this action to be very carefully up and precisely picked by the admin so let me just stop this and I can say even though I keep this accessible to both admin and poster I want my delete endpoint to only be accessible by the admin and what this will do is if I run this application again I'm going to switch back to the poster. Get a JWT. I really should be saving those. So bearer. And again, the poster can get both of them. But if I go ahead and say, please delete tag three. I'm getting a 403 because my poster doesn't have the permission. He's not on the admin role. If I do, however, switch back once again and I go ahead and say admin. And I copy that. And I log in again. Then I can see them still, but now I can also delete. So I see 204 and searching with terms of single. So with this very simple way, we can now use the roles to restrict certain endpoints. I want to summarize a few things. So if you have a single authorized tag on the controller, then every endpoint will be affected. If you have an authorized tag on the endpoint itself, then you restrict it to this specific role. If you have, let's say, admin and poster, then you say, I need both of these. So two authorized tags means both, comma means one or the other. So those are the three types of combinations. Now, of course, you can also add policies into the mix, but we are not going to do that here. I do want to show you in the MVC installer that if you go authorization, you say options and then you say options dot add policy and you create a new uh, policy. You can say policy.add 
I do need the name, so test. Then you can say require claim, require role. So you can have both roles here in a single policy, but this is up to you on how you want to do it. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use something similar to this to create a custom claim. So let's say if the user is of a certain age, you might want them to see this endpoint. If not, block them. But this is something we're going to see in the next video. Or you can click on the right top corner of your video right now if this video is out to watch that. This is all I have for this video. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.